4th of October 1957, the start of the space race. Today, a new moon is in the sky, a 23-inch metal sphere placed in orbit by a Russian rocket. Launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, Sputnik orbited every 98 minutes, broadcasting a radio signal to the Earth below. It was a major event. It was the start of the conquest of space by the Soviets, which nobody was expecting. We were expecting it to be the Americans, of course, who did come along later, but it was a major panic in the capitals of the West, knowing that the Russians, the Soviets, were capable of doing such a thing. The satellite was built by Energia and led by chief designer Sergei Korolev. One of the original Sputnik flight spares hangs in the state company's private museum. It was suggested after the first successful launches of the R-7 rocket to launch the simplest possible Sputnik, which meant that it was not supposed to have any scientific equipment, it just had batteries, a thermal regulation system and a transmission module. Within weeks of Sputnik, the Soviets had launched the first dog into space. Then, the first moon probe. And in 1961, the first man, Yuri Gagarin, followed by the first woman. And the first spacewalk. The government issued the program of the future exploration of space. In this paper, they mentioned automatic stations flying to the moon, flights to Mars and Venus. They mentioned the flight of human beings to space. They spoke about man stepping on Mars, Venus and the moon and building their stations there. I draw your attention to the fact that it was in December 1959. Sixty years on, today's communication satellites, such as Europe's giant AlphaSat, can trace their origins to Sputnik. And every astronaut bound for the International Space Station still blasts off from Baikonur. These days, however, it's all about international cooperation rather than competition. I believe now it's not that important in which field we are first. What matters is what we're aiming to do with our partners. I mean those really important breakthrough explorations. Among them is ExoMars, the second stage of which we're going to launch in 2020. And now we're in the phase of active preparation. I also mean explorations of the Moon, which will bring us closer to the exploration of the lunar environment and to establishing a station which can be visited and lived in there. At the Cosmonautics Museum in Moscow, visitors can see the relics of humanity's first steps into space and marvel at the engineering and ambition of those early missions. They can also look forward to the next 60 years in space, with nations working together on missions to the Moon, Mars and beyond.